Welcome to the Reality Check with Dr. Ida Blumenthal. Thorough discussion on critical issues with key people who understand pertinent nuances. The Reality Check. Talk radio for intelligent listeners. Gerald Parpenfuss is my guest this evening on the Reality Check and uh, he is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Employer Association of South Africa. He is an absolute icon when it comes to representing small business in what has to be regarded as, as very oppositional forums sometime, sometimes, including the forum, by the way, of NEDLAC, the National Economic Development and Labor Council of South Africa. He flies the flag squarely for small business, but very often ends up representing the interests of large business, large to medium-sized business as well. I'm very pleased, I'm very proud to have Gerard Parkenfuss on The Reality Check. The Reality Check. Talk radio for intelligent listeners. Who is Gerard Parkenfuss? I'm uh, the chief executive of NIHASA, which, uh, which has a passion for the interests of uh, SMMEs in particular. So let, let's be specific. Yeah. NIASA is the National Employer Association of South Africa. That's right. It is how big? How strong? Just over 10,000 businesses. 10,000 businesses on a national basis That's in right. this country. That's right. And they're all small businesses. Well, they're not all small businesses. They are you know, a number of big businesses, and, and we serve them as, as, as good as we can. But, you know, big business... Uh, can look after themselves. Yes. My heart is with the interest of SMME, you say. You really are the collective voice of small business, sir. Well, you say so. Because there is no <laughs> other. I mean, let's be honest about yeah, that. There yeah, is no yeah, other. Yeah, that, that might be the case, yes. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard it often said that Gerard Papenfuss is the, almost the sole voice of reason in many of these bargaining councils, certainly at the National Economic Development and Labor Council. I mean, is that a badge you carry with pride? You, you know, uh, um, you say it now, but, but um, I'm. Uh, if I if I am to evaluate myself, I will. I would say I'm only beginning now. <laughs> so I'm I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm I'm disappointed in what we achieve. You know, I'm in a hurry always. You know. Um, I see that there's a lot of things that's happening. I see that uh, um, I see the economic, the, the, the political cli- climate is, uh, is, 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 is causing a bit of discouragement amongst employers. And I think that's the biggest thing. So, um, you know, encouraging employers and, give them, and giving them a, a new vision is, is, a, is, is a huge challenge. Uh, because the situation we have is the situation we have, and we've got to make the best of the situation we s- we find ourselves in. And I think the 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 discouragement that uh, you find amongst employers is it's, it's perhaps the uh, biggest problem. You know, you can overcome all, everything else if if you're positive and you see a future. And I don't. I think lots of employers don't do not see a future for themselves. In the moment, you don't see a future for yourself. You don't have a future. But, but those businesses are continuing, those, those industries are continuing. Are you, are you sort of implying that it's almost automated? They're continuing, but they're not as productive as they can be. Oh, yeah. the, the, the owners are one foot possibly in running their business, another foot in wanting to sell their business and therefore are not yeah. totally committed. Oh, well, you know, you can't get out. This, uh, this, uh, um, I th- you know, we've, we've, at some stage we did a survey in the metal industry. And we asked employers, if, if your factory burns down mm. and you're paid out, what will you do? Will you reinvest in the engineering industry? And 89% said we won't. But the so point we want out. We, we, want, we want out of this industry. But we can't, you, you, can't, you can't get out. Mm. You know, so you're in and you've got to survive. And it's, I think to some extent, uh, some people are, a lot of people are in a survival mode. But you don't grow. And, and, and so the industry is in a steady state of decline, and not only in metal. I've just used that as an example. I think... Because your 10,000 members are across industries. Uh, acro- across industries. And every th- all industries are in a slow state of decline. That doesn't mean that there are certain individuals and uh, businesses that's, that's actually growing. But um, the SMME market is so important uh, to... to it's, it's a way of living for people that simply do not have other ways to live.
And we've got, to, we've got to open this market for these people. We've got to open their thinking. We've got to create wo- uh, 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 hope. And then, uh, of course, we need to change the, the, the uh, environment, the, the laws, etc. The operating environment. Yeah, to, to, to do business much easier because uh, and, would, and, and would you that's a huge fight. Would you agree with detractors uh, of, wanting to do, of doing business in this country? Would you agree or disagree with them that it's a very difficult operating environment within which to run a small business in oh, South it's, Africa? It's, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult. You know, I've, I've had a, a meeting this morning, and, and, and I'm, I'm answering you by means of an example. Um, uh, we got recently got involved in the uh, building industry in the, in the Western Cape right. on request of the employers. Right. And there's lots of industries that's begging us to get also involved in the, in the, in the bargaining council system on their behalf. So there is a bargaining council in the Western Cape yeah. in the construction sector? Uh, yeah, um, building. Yes. And uh, uh, I, I went down personally and uh, we got groups of employees together and I addressed them. And um, in those uh, uh, audiences were small, previously disadvantaged employers. Small black employers. Oh, yeah. Which it says, but this is impossible to function in that, in that environment. They are, they, they're being killed. Mm-hmm. And so so uh, what they're saying is it's almost impossible for them to get into the environment and to continue to operate, and yet that's the same environment that the traditionally white operators have had to operate under for so long. Uh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So it, n- it suits neither purpose. Uh, no, it's, it, it, it suits nobody. It only suits big business. Yes. Now, the, the discussion this morning, and this is a typical environment, what we say is that uh, uh, the, the council has requested the minister to extend an agreement reached between a body of employers and the trade unions. The body of employers represent 27% of employers. Right, that typical 20% who employ 80% of the industry. Yeah. But the, the unions represent 17%. One seven. One seven. Now, we've had a very high-level discussion this morning with the department in which we point out, do not extend this agreement. Yes. And I've pointed out the hardship that this is causing. I mean, this, this bargaining council is a bully. Yes. But I can see they, they want to extend it. They, they are pro-collective bargaining. Now, you know, collect, uh, collective bargaining in itself is not a problem. It's the way this thing is structured. And uh, bargaining councils, you know, what, what happens here is uh, uh, established business is simply putting out other people out of business. This is the system. But is this not the stuff of which the Competition Commission is made up of? Uh, yeah, well, well it, 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 it should have been. Was it not for the fact that the uh, Competition Act is specifically excluded by our councils? Because if it wasn't for that, <laughs> this whole scheme would have been under scrutiny. But there's no question that in the majority of the 50 to 70 bargaining councils that once existed, maybe still exist in this country. There's no question that the vast pr- proportion of at least the business chamber of that bargaining council are your medium to large size businesses and almost completely exclude small businesses. Oh, yeah. And therefore right. are making decisions which are anti, which are monopolistic and, and, no. and anti-free trade. That's, that, is, that is the case. Now, since Niasa got involved, you know, we we got involved, if I may say this now about Niasa, we got involved in the metal industry, yes. bargaining council, in 2010. And um, in the uh, management committee of the council, I was the sole... Voice uh, for small uh, business. <laughs> the rest of the guys were in a particular grouping representing big business. Now, th- this thing has changed. Niasa has got 14 seats today. <laughs> One four. One four. Out of a total of? 20. <laughs> for business. You've got 14 seats out of 20 yeah. seats on in the business caucus. Yeah, that's, that's right. amazing. But you know what is a strange thing? Yeah. That... that um, the, the, the whole system has changed. change. The, the, that particular bargaining council was called the flagship of a bargaining council. The thing is now bankrupt. Hmm. It's litigated to bankruptcy. Uh, and now we sit with the 14 seats, and with all the, all the support, we have 17 out of the 20 seats support NIASA. But the three seats, that's not worth us. With those three seats, they can still have an agreement extended. Because that's big business. That's big business. And with the support of a trade union, NUMSA in particular, and with the support of the Department of Labor. And we constantly in court, I mean, if, if NIASA has spent s- from uh, 2011 until today on that council 23 million rand. But what do the courts say about that challenge? I mean, you're talking well, about... Well, they find in our favor. Every time? Every time. 
And then what happens? They do the same thing again. We've got to go back. They just try a new uh, way of doing it, but uh, they, they do it wrong. They're incompetent. They, you know, they rogue. And we win every time. I mean, a uh, court is, 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 uh, it, it is called the system a sham. But we've simply got to continue. I mean, it's like a monster that you can't kill. But hold on a moment. Within the Department of Labor, you have the registrar, yeah. uh, who is supposed to look at the registration of employer associations, and maybe someone else looking at the registration of trade unions, and certainly there is a bargaining council registration process. Surely the Department of Labor should be the voice of reason, the honest broker in this game? They're not. Why? Well, they, they, they just not do that. I mean, but, but what's what is <laughs> advantageous for them in uh, not being that honest broker? Oh, well, you know, it's just a lack of awareness. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when 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 uh, when Numsa was still uh, within Kusatu, uh, there was I mean, Numsa, uh, Numsa at that stage is uh, de facto was the de facto management of the Department of Labor's Labor Relations. Dep the uh, National Union of Metal Workers yeah. of South Africa. Well, they, they controlled the system. Whatever they said, and we, f we had to fight each and every case in court. So that Department of Labor is simply a political conduit. Uh, there's no doubt. Now, the Registrar of Labor Relations is the Registrar of, of Trade Unions, Employees Organizations, and Bargaining Councils. Now, what has happened, uh, the, the current Registrar has... Uh, is, is taken on, uh, well, wanted to put the trade unions of Pavu under uh, administration. And that's when the minister fire essentially put him into suspension? Absolutely. And he won in court, they appealed it, they lost the department. He's back in his, his job, but, but the, 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 it just illustrates what happens. Uh, and I mean, in this, that particular trade union is now not functioning. Well, he I was right about well, Sapawa, uh, no, wasn't he? he? Well, he was 100% right. But so what do we have there? And, and you know, uh, I mean, I know these guys. I, I, I actually have a reasonable relationship with them. And uh, sometimes there are heated debates amongst us, but their agenda is pro-bargaining pro council. And they will bend backwards to enhance the interests of that, of the system whilst it's not good, they have the control in their hands. If they play by the book, and I mean the book is not good for the, the economy, but even if they play by the book, we've got a chance. But now we've got to go to court in each and every case. But you said, you started off by saying that you didn't have a problem with the bargaining council system. You had a problem with the way it was being managed and implemented. So ordinarily I would imagine the ERC is in favour of a bargaining council kind of environment as long as there are a fair and equitable well, operating if, if, process. If, if you have a bargaining council system uh, where the voice of a business counts as a voice. Yes. If a small business have, the, the weight of a small business's vote is similar to that of a big business. And that's what you must have. One vote, one member. Well, of course. I mean, if, uh, if uh, an employed person can have one vote and a professor uh, uh, can have one vote and an unskilled person has one vote, then it's, wh why is the system? But the system that's is... That's proper transformation, isn't well, it? Well, that's, that's, because if you want, to, then you cater for small business.